Hello, and welcome to your August edition of Book Bites Elementary Snacks, your source for tasty reads for grades K through 5. So we're talking first chapter and early middle grade novels. This month, we are inspired by the heat and the upcoming school year to focus on books that take place over summer vacation. Just because this summer looks a little different doesn't mean we want it to be over just yet. Here are some fantastic book recommendations that all take place during the magical time that is summer break. First up, we have a widely acclaimed amazing book, One Crazy Summer by Rita Williams Garcia. So this book is absolutely charming. It takes place in 1968, and the Gaither sisters, who live in Brooklyn with their father and grandma, are being sent out to California to spend a summer with their estranged mother. They get a sunny summer of beaches in Disneyland, not exactly. Their mom, a poet and activist, doesn't want them to get in the way of her work and sends them to a Black Panther daycare. They learn a lot about independence and who they are, and it is a great book for learning about a time and place that's not always seen as much in children's lit. It's very funny at the same time. There are two more books about the Gaither sisters. PSB 11 features them as they try to fit back in at home when they return from their adventures, and Gone Crazy in Alabama is another summer story where they head on down south to spend some time with their great-grandmother. Next up, we have The Penderwicks. This is a delightful tale whose subtitle clearly explains why it's on this list. That is, a summer tale of four sisters, two rabbits, and a very interesting boy. The four sisters have come up with their widowed father to spend three weeks in the cottage on the property of the very interesting boy, whose mother's not as sure about the four Penderwick sisters. It's all about the friendships that develop and the adventures that are all had, and it will enchant and delight kids of all ages. They're very sweet and nostalgic books with an old-fashioned vibe with no specific year stated. There are four more books in the series, and the final book just came out last year. Since both the previous books have been around for a long time, I also wanted something newer to round out my top three. So the final spot on this list goes to The Last Last Day of Summer by Lamar Giles. This book just came out last year, and it has a sequel out in October, The Last Mirror on the Left, which I am eagerly anticipating. So this book is a hilarious and clever sci-fi adventure starring the legendary Austin Boys. Otto and Sheed are two cousins in a quirky Virginia town who just happen to accidentally freeze time on the day before school starts. That's just the beginning, as they learn secrets about the town and each other, they learn about themselves, and they learn that all good summers must come to an end. It has a definite Phineas and Ferb vibe, which is a high, high recommendation. But which book will we hear the first chapter from? Wait for it. And now we'll have a reading from chapter one of bum, ba -da -bum, ba -ba -ba, The Last Last Day of Summer by Lamar Giles. Chapter one. B-T-S-F-O-A-S-T-G. First of all, Grandma's teacup pig calendar lied. It said the last day of summer was September 21st. Everyone already knew September was a bad month with no good holiday in sight after Labor Day. Fourth of July was at least two months gone. Halloween was more than a month away. But the real last day of summer was the last Monday in August. Cousins Otto and Sheed Alston had known this for a while thanks to the big red circle around the last Tuesday in August. Inside that circle, equally red and in Grandma's handwriting, were the letters B-T-S-F-O-A-S-T-G. When they asked about it, Grandma said, It's an acronym. It means Back to School for Otto and Sheed. Thank goodness. The boys began thinking of it as an acronym because it meant back to alarm clocks and homeroom and homework. Ugh, ac! In Logan County, Virginia, summer ended when school started. Tomorrow. And, thanks to an unfortunate headline in the latest printing of the county's newspaper, Otto was not going to take it lying down. Wake up, Otto said. He finished tying his sneakers with jerky, irritated motions and stretched one leg across the gap between their beds, nudging Sheed's mattress with his toe. He'd let, allowed his cousin to snooze long enough, given the circumstances. Sheed said, Ugh, stop. Otto had risen with the sun, eager and upbeat like most mornings. As was his habit, he padded downstairs in socked feet, eased Grandma's front door open, and plucked the latest issue of the Logan County Gazette off the porch. There was usually some mention of him and his cousin in the folds of the daily paper, some new clipping to collect. The county folk loved reading about their local legends. 
but what he saw on that morning's front page would never benefit from his admirable scrapbooking skills. He'd stomped back upstairs, got dressed in tan cargo shorts and his favorite t-shirt. It was green with big white block letters that read, Stand back. I'm going to deduce. There was work to do. Come on, Sheed, it's the last day. The angry air from Sheed's nostrils puffed the sheet over his face into a tent. I know, that's why I want to sleep. You only want to sleep because you haven't read this morning's newspaper. I don't read any morning's newspaper. What are you even talking about right now? Sheed burrowed deeper under his covers like a mole in dirt. All around, on haphazardly aligned shelves the boys had fastened to the walls themselves, amidst the model cars and their made-up superhero drawings, were souvenirs from all the adventures they'd experienced throughout the season. A mason jar holding a shiny, pigeon-sized husk from a laughing locust, a lock of banshee hair that sang them to sleep whenever the moon was full, and many more things unique to, or drawn to, the strange county in which they lived. Of all the trophies, it was the two keys to the city awarded to them by the mayor of Fry that filled Otto with the most pride until today. He smacked Sheed's shoulder with the rolled-up newspaper and peeled back his blanket. You don't really want to waste time sleeping on our last day of summer, our last chance to have one more adventure before you-know-what starts. Otto refused to say the S-word. Do you? Yes, Sheed covered his head with a pillow. Otto yanked the cord that zipped their blinds to the top of the window frame flooding the room with bright sunshine. Sheed threw his pillow. Otto dodged it easily. Sheed said, Fine, I'm up. What's with you? Now that he had Sheed's attention, Otto unfolded the offensive newspaper for his cousin to see. Sheed read it, then groaned, Ugh, and smacked his forehead. I can't believe you woke me up for this. Otto turned the paper so he could read the worst news ever, unclear why Sheed wasn't more upset. The headline read, Epic Ellison's received third key to the city. They broke the tie, Otto said, his gaze flicking to their meager pair of keys. They somehow seemed duller in this morning's light. The epic Ellison's, a.k.a. twin sisters Wicky and Lean, were the county's other adventurers. Some might say they were rivals. Not Otto, though. In his mind, the Ellison's were clearly the inferior duo. Otto might have to talk to Mayor Ahmed about handling handing they, those keys out willy-nilly. But in the meantime, come on. Otto grabbed his notepad and tiny always there pencil. The legendary Austin boys never sleep late. That nickname's stupid, she'd said, not meaning it. This legendary Austin boy does sleep late whenever his annoying cousin lets him. Exactly. Otto slipped on his backpack, cinching the straps tight against his shoulders. Like I said, never. She'd rounded the corner into Grandma's kitchen and found Otto shoveling a final spoonful of cereal into his mouth. He still wasn't happy being dragged out of bed so early, but had somehow managed to get dressed despite feeling all yawny and stiff. He'd put on jeans that were spotted with permanent grass stains and ripped at the knees, red high tops, a white t-shirt, and his favorite purple Fry Flamingos basketball jersey, given to him by Fry High School basketball star number double zero Quentin Sparks after she'd and Otto got rid of the ghost haunting the Flamingos locker room last fall. He flopped into his usual seat while combing a plastic wide toothpick through his admittedly small but growing afro, fluffing it out as far as it would go. First to fro, one day dreadlocks. A solid plan, if he said so himself. Don't pick your hair at the table, Grandma said. She faced the stove, never needing to actually see them to know if they were breaking some rule or another. Now, go on and eat. She'd ceased his grooming, wedged his pick tight and into his thick hair so only the handle protruded and dug into a bowl of frosty loops. Otto's foot tapped the tile floor impatiently. She'd decreased his eating speed by half, just to annoy his cousin. When she'd finally finished, Otto was on his feet, bouncing and fidgety. Ready? I guess. Hurry up, then. The skin around Grandma's eyes crinkled as she narrowed her gaze in their direction. She said, Boys, why do you always got to be at odds? One fast, one slow. One say east, the other says west. Stop all that foolishness. She poked the teacup pig calendar, her finger right on, B-T-S-F-O-A-S-T-G. That time's going to fly by before you know it, so go on and enjoy your day and each other. But Grandma was wrong. The time wasn't going to fly by, and they would not be enjoying the day because things were about to get stranger than usual in Logan County. The legendary Austin boys just didn't know it yet. So that was the first chapter of The Last Last Day of Summer by Lamar Giles.
Don't forget, I have a whole book list full of wonderful summer break reads, including some first chapter and graphic novel reads for you to snack on in our last month of summer vacation. Don't forget to check out all our virtual events online, and you can also place holds to come pick them up in person. You can get physical materials from your library. Have a great month.